Hi, in this video we'll have a look at the integrations between the character controller and the inventory system. You can find the version of the asset under Tools, Opsiv, Inventory System and Character Controller under the Main Manager. We'll open both editors and here you'll find the version number at the bottom left, which is important. And if you go to the Integrations tab within the Inventory Manager, and go to integrations inspectors you'll find the ultimate character controller uh, and the integration version which is here 3.00 so the first thing we'll talk about is why do you want to use the character controller integrations with the inventory system and the main advantage is having the attributes of the system of the items sorry uh, if i open here the integrations demo database uh, we'll find our item definitions and we'll have our item attributes right here where we can define things like damage amount or our ammo data or other uh, specific uh, properties of our items directly on the item and they're not stuck inside a mono behavior uh, within a prefab or a component or a game object. So if I open, for example, the assault rifle weapon which is the prefab we have for the integrations, this one. If I scroll down, you'll see that what I'm doing is using certain modules that are specific to the integration. So for example, the inventory item ammo and the inventory ammo data clip uh, will be able to use this attribute right here to get the ammo data. And then we have things, for example, within the impact uh, simple damage in item object bindings within the bindings of this uh, simple damage we have a thing which basically binds the damage amount to a property of this module uh, and same thing for impact force frames and impact force these are bound to this attribute and these two so for example item attributes can change at runtime so if we could potentially change the damage amount of our assault rifle at runtime if we want to uh, so let's give this a try we'll go inside the demo just to showcase how it works we'll open the inventory open and equip our assault rifle and if we shoot this guy right here we'll see that we're doing 10 damage and if we go to the inventory of our character and find within our equipable slots the assault rifle that we're using and change this to let's say 35 now our assault rifle should be able to do 35 damage there you go so this is basically the whole point of the of the integrations using attributes on your items to be able to change uh, the damage or whatever properties you want on the on the weapons of your characters. Uh, another thing we can do is uh, not only change modules within the item actions, but for example, this weapon right here is a sword. So if we go in our third person and select our third person object, there we go. And we zoom in, we'll see that our weapon is red. And this is because we're using a property on the attribute. Uh, which is a color to change the material of our weapon so that even though we're using the same prefab for our uh, sword item and for our Excalibur item, uh, we're still, we, we have some control over the looks of our weapon. So potentially here we're changing the color uh, between the sword and the Excalibur, uh, but we could change uh, whatever we want, whether it's uh, the prefabs or some visual effects, etc. So this is really the, the power of the integrations. So now let's see how we could set it up. So first thing we'll do is create our own scene to be able to set up our character and our items. And um, before we get started on this, uh, I assume that you have watched all of these videos right here for setting up a scene, setting up a character controller, uh, setting up a character item prefab for the character controllers. So make sure to check out these video tutorials before you continue. 
the first thing we'll do is go to tools, app save, ultimate inventory system, and we'll create our inventory database for our, uh, for our game. So instead of the integrations, what we'll do is get the empty character inventory database. We have, uh, it has the item categories uh, that are useful for getting started and we'll duplicate it to get our own character controller. Uh, so keep references to prefabs uh, is fine if uh, that shouldn't be a problem. We'll call this a uh, tutorial inventory database and we'll put it inside here. So now we've got our own database and right here we've got some categories already pre-set up for you. Uh, the important ones are the all item categories, which has some attributes for icon and descriptions, uh, which is useful for every single item. Then we've got our ammo, which uh, doesn't do much. It's just basically to separate it from other items. Droppables, which will be used to uh, define the prefab for the dropped items. The equipable, which is important, it's the category that will be used to define what are the items that the character can equip uh, through the character system. Then we've got item with ammo, uh, which has right here an ammo data, which is quite useful. And then we've got our multi-item and single item, which basically has the item attribute for defining whether you have a game object array to define multiple character items, prefabs, or a single one. Uh, that only depends on your workflow and what you prefer to do. Uh, if you're not sure, then always use, always use this one, the array. Uh, this way you could have a character item uh, for left or right hand and more. Okay, first what we'll do is uh, create the, set up the scene. So we'll go to tools, up save, ultimate inventory system. Uh, we'll set up the scene right here uh, to set up the inputs if you haven't done so. Then set up the scene. So we're going to add the components and set them the characters fine we'll do it through the integrations so let's go through the same thing for the character controller main manager let's go to setup we'll set up the managers and right here we'll use both because we're using the ucc package uh, if you're using first or third then make sure to select those and we'll start in third person Let's set this up and let's set up the UI also. So now that we've set up the scene, the next thing we'll do is uh, basically convert our character to work for the integration system. Uh, so what we'll do in this example is use the at last character from the character controller demo scene, not the integration demo scene. And we'll unpack this. If we go to a prefab, unpack completely, there you go. And the other thing we'll have is also an assault rifle that will equip on this character. So we'll find the one from the demo scene also, uh, this one right here. And I'll unpack this too. So prefab, unpack completely. So this is assuming that you've created your own uh, character and your own uh, assault rifle. For your character so what i'll do to convert it is drag and drop the at last character uh, if you check those components right here on the character you'll see that it has an item set manager and an inventory and as soon as we press set up character then these things will be converted and now we have uh, inventory from the inventory system instead of the character system we've got the in character inventory bridge which will bridge this inventory system to the character uh, equipable items and then we've got also an inventory item set manager and it has also added things like the inventory identifier item user currency owner inventory interactor and the inventory bridge saver if you want to save the inventory uh, through the save system uh, since we set up the character from the demo scene you'll see that we have a few warnings uh, make sure you read through those warnings and the, basically what they do is let you know that some of the categories on your item are not set up properly so in this case it says that our equip and unequip abilities are uh, potentially going to cause issues 
So let's have a look. And that's because the character from the demo scene uh, comes from uh, comes with these categories that we do not have in the category or the inventory database that we created just before. Uh, so we'll probably want to delete those uh, because we do not want them. Uh, then what we do, uh, we double check that our equip and non-equip are set to the equipable or a child of uh, the equipable category. So I'm double checking every one of them. Yep. So they're all referencing the equipable item category, which is correct. And if we scroll down back to the inventory item set manager, we want to make sure that these ones are going to are gonna point to the correct item category. So this should be equipable. Uh, make sure you select the ones that you created when we created the inventory database. So this is the correct one. And we'll want to remove uh, this. We do not want them. The demo multi item set rule will replace it with the uh, individual demo item set rule. There you go. This one. Uh, this item set rule essentially what it does is whatever item you have that can be equipable, it will create an item set for it. Uh, this way we don't have to think about the different combinations. It basically it will create one for every single item. Uh, if you want to learn more about the item set rules, make sure to check out the documentation and the video tutorials on the subject. Uh, it's very important that you get them right to be able to equip your items the way exactly you want. Um, in the integration, you'll see that we have a few item set rules uh, that are specific to the integration. So I'll just show you uh, where they are. You can go to create ultimate, uh, sorry, upsev character controller inventory, and you'll find here those ones, the item category item set rule, the item definition item set rule, and the item slot collection item set rule. Uh, essentially, this will create item sets depending on the category of your item. This will create through the item definitions. And this one, what it will do is map exactly the item slot collection slots of your item to item slet, uh, set slots. So uh, if you're not sure what I mean by that, I mean these equipable slots is an item slot collection. So it will try to map uh, these ones from the uh, item slot sets right here. It will try to match a primary to slot zero, secondary to slot uh, one, and then tactical to so slot three. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really make sense, but in some other setups, it might. Uh, so now let's go back to what we were doing before. Uh, we'll press play just to make sure that there aren't any errors with the character right now. Okay, so we're going through. We're just getting a warning that we can ignore. Basically, the camera is uh, found the player, and that's about it. So that's all good uh, for now. We've got our character that is now set up for the integration. And what we'll do is create uh, the assault rifle for this character. Uh, so we'll go back here, go to our item categories, and we'll create... Uh, something, a, a category that will hold our damage data. So we'll call this uh, item with damage, let's say. And any category or any category that inherits this one will have damage. So we'll do in item attributes, call this damage amount. Uh, make sure that this is a float. There you go. And any category that now inherits this uh, item category will have this attribute. And we'll create one that's called shootable weapon. And our shootable weapon will have parents. Uh, so here, shootable weapon will have parents, which are going to be the equipable, or actually single item, or actually multi-item. Let's go with multi-item. And we'll also go with item with ammo and item with damage. This way we've got here are prefabs that we can define in an array and our ammo data and our damage amount. So let's go to item definition. We'll create assault rifle. 
and assault rifle bullets bullet there you go so assault rifle will be a shootable weapon and the assault rifle bullets will be within the ammo okay so assault rifle right here will assign an icon assault rifle and within the ammo data we'll assign the assault rifle bullet and we'll say that the clip size is 48 there you go the damage uh, damage uh, amount will be let's say 15 and now we need to set up our prefab for this uh, assault rifle so we'll assume that you already created the uh, item through the 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 other tutorials so in this case we're going to use this one from the uh, character control the demo scene and i'm just going to take it and create a new prefab right here uh, we'll call this one tutorial and i'll just make sure that i am indeed referencing right here inside the item definition uh, we'll remove this and put the assault rifle instead that we just created making sure that this is the correct one right here under tutorial inventory database and we've got everything set up the way we want we'll also check the shootable action so right now we won't change anything just to show you uh, what are the potential problems except for the uh, item ammo We'll make sure that we're not referencing the assault rifle bullet from the character controller demo scene but rather the one we just created so assault rifle bullet making sure we're selecting the correct one from the database and there you go so now we've got this one and this set up we'll go here to the prefabs drag and drop this within the list and now we've got our assault rifle right here okay so, so far, so good. Let's uh, remove this from the scene. Go to Atlas and we'll find uh, right here within loadout of our inventory. Uh, so all of these items collections were created when we set up the character for the integration. We've got this loadout, which is of type character loadout item collection. And what this uh, item collection allows you to do is equip items as soon as you load the loadout which is very useful by clicking this option and we'll assign this to assault rifle right here and then inside the default uh, item collection we'll add some bullets there you go we'll add 100 bullets i just realized that i forgot to add the icon for the bullet so let's do that real quick rifle bullet there you go so now if i check this out i've got the icon right here so we'll save uh, and press play let's see what happens now okay so the character is not equipping anything so let's see if there's any errors there's no errors so let's double check the atlas character so in the atlas character we've got here an assault rifle bullet and assault rifle within the demo item collection so the reason it's not equipping is because the bridge doesn't know about this item at all it thinks right here current inventory nothing in inventory so it doesn't know about these things because the bridge item collections are only uh, monitoring the equipable slots and the equipable item collections so these two so what I should do, instead of loading the loadout within the default right here that I've specified, I'll say equipable instead. Equipable, or let's say equipable slots. So now what this will do is this loadout will give this item within equipable slots, and equipable slots is monitored by the bridge. So now it should be able to equip it uh, without any issues. Let's double check if that's the case. Okay, so we've equipped the item. We can shoot, so there's no problem here. Uh, and if we open these things, okay. 
you can see the the ammo is getting used and we're getting a clip of 50 uh, because we haven't bound any of the attributes to the item yet uh, what we could do also is quickly add a boxing joe which is a prefab of this little guy right here and we can shoot and we'll be able to tell how much damage we're doing so to be able to monitor uh, the pop-ups for the damage we'll have to add within the monitors right here a game object so let's right click uh, create empty we'll call this pop-up or damage pop-up monitor let's go damage pop-up monitor this one uh, we'll add from the demo scene so the character control the demo scene we'll add the uh, demo damage and the uh, demo heal pop up there you go and we'll make sure that this id right here ID matches the one that we've defined on boxing joe if we go to pop up rigid body check the health You'll find right here somewhere uh, an ID, I believe, right here. An UI, damage, pop-up, manager, ID, this one, too. But this ID needs to match this ID right here. So now if we go back, we should be able to shoot, shoot him. There you go, and we're doing 10 damage. So now what we'll do is bind the item attributes from our character item to the attributes on the inventory item. So to do this, we'll need to go back to our prefab or assault rifle weapon, and we'll change a few things on the shootable action right here. So the first thing we we'll want to do is change anything that's related to a clip. So we'll remove the ammo, uh, which was referencing the, the normal ammo, uh, let's say, which is just the item definition. And instead, what we'll do is use an inventory item ammo. This way, we've got a better UI for selecting our assault rifle bullet, which is very nice. And we can also define right here uh, whether we want to use the ammo data to get this value here. So even if we don't define it here, since it's defined within the attributes, if we go here in the inventory system, manager, uh, go to item definitions since we've defined right here uh, bup, 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 where is it right here ammo data since we've defined it here we don't even need to define it right here within this ammo definition if we tick this value on so we'll be able to get it from there from the ammo data uh, and then the other thing we'll do is within the clip we'll remove this which was clip 50 and instead we'll use an inventory ammo data clip and what this will do is use those two values right here the clip size and the clip remaining to be able to store those values uh, the other thing we wanted to change is uh, the damage so this would be under impact simple damage we'll use here bindings we'll click here and use a item object binding click here find our ammo with uh, no item with damage and right here we've got our attributes which is damage amount and we'll be able to select here a property so a property on this object right here the simple damage and it's going to be damage amount uh, if you've got you'll see that these bindings right here uh, you'll be able to find it on pretty much anything that is a module uh, so if we click right here you'll find bindings You'll find it also in item effects. So anything that is an effect, you'll find the bindings and anything that is an impact also. So whether it's, uh, what is it? Impacts or impacts right here, you'll find the bindings right here. Uh, and then potentially uh, in some cases, what you could do is instead of using modules and item uh, bindings, you can use the item binding component uh, so this is useful in cases where you want to be able to bind values on components 
rather than within inside modules. Uh, so you'll be able to change here your category to let's say damage. And then right here, you can drag and drop your uh, object, whatever it is, and you'll be able to find some properties right here. So this is for maybe custom components that you want or have. Let's remove this for now because we don't need it. And okay, so for now we've set up our item and let's go back to the scene. Okay, so now if we shoot him, we should see it's 15 damage and that's exactly what we got. Now let's make sure that it works perfectly. So we'll go back to Atlas, find our assault rifle, which is right here, assault rifle. Change the damage to, let's say, 25. And now if you shoot him, there you go, 25, 25, 25. Okay, great. So now we've got uh, a character that is used for the integrations. We've got our item that uses the values on the uh, on the item attributes. Uh, so we'll double check also the clip. If you check at the bottom right, you'll see now it uses 48 instead of 50. So everything works as uh, we would hope so. What we'll do in the next video is set up the UI to be able to equip, unequip items, etc. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.